let's directly move to our next uh, section, which is the challenge present um, presentation section. So in this section first, uh, our Chun Yuan Li will talk about the challenge, and then we will uh, kind of um, we will uh, we will give you a thirty minutes video about the challenge talks. So now let's um, let me. See. Yeah, Chun Yuan is a principal researcher at MSR. His recent research focused on large scale pre training in computer vision and language NLP. He obtained his PhD in machine learning at Duke University, advised by Professor Lawrence Karen. And Chun Yuan is the major can, uh, is the main organizer of this workshop. And thanks for his great efforts in organizing this workshop. Now let's will continue to talk about the challenges. Just a reminder uh, about uh, the schedule to everyone. So my talk was scheduled for 15 minutes. And uh, uh, for your information, my talk will be the last live presentation. And after that, we will have the 30 minutes pre-recorded video presentation. And after that, we will have the lunch break. And the afternoon session will start at 1.30 uh, p.m. Israel time. So um, because this is the last live presentation, I may take longer than expected. OK, uh, hey everyone. I'm going to uh, summarize uh, the uh, uh, computation in a the challenge and talk about uh, our um, definition of computation in a world and the benchmark. So first of all, like I guess everyone knows that image classification and object detection are two important computation tasks. And with recent advances in deep learning and many great results have been achieved uh, in the research community, uh, especially on the real well-established data set. For example, uh, ImageNet 1K um, for, for image classification and COCO for object detection. Um, however, in the real world scenarios, there are many more interesting visual recognition tasks in the world. And unfortunately, good models that perform well on internet or on COCO does not necessarily uh, perform well on uh, the in the world settings, the new application scenarios. So with the recent elements, uh, with the recent language augmentation augmented visual models or vision language models, we have seized the opportunity to build transferable computation systems that can easily transfer to many uh, computation uh, scenarios in the world. Um, for example, many new models mentioned in this workshop, they can be readily applied to these CV in the world settings. Uh, however, the problem is how can we measure the progress that we have been made. And it has several challenges. And for example, and each individual pre-trained model reports result on a subset of customized data set. And sometimes the model, adapted, model adaptation details are uh, not fully available. And all of them, they make the evaluation difficult. And in one of the main reasons that we organizing this workshop and challenge is trying to make the comparison and the benchmarking easier. So what is computation in the world? Um, we are trying to provide our definition in one sentence, which is developing a transferable foundation model or system that can easily adapt to a large range of visual tasks in the world. And there are two key factors. And the first one is the task transfer scenarios are broad. And second one is the task for transfer cost is low. And for, for those who are new to this topic, and we have combined uh, a reading list, and you may ch uh, check it out so that you can get started with this research topic and gathering the momentum. So let's talk about the first factor. So we illustrate a uh, computer vision in a model setting and then trying to compare it with existing computer vision settings. And we, we do this by defining a 2D space. 
and the, where we say that this 2D space is the what it is constructed um, by two dimensions. The first one is the x axis is the visual content or the uh, input image distribution, and the y axis is the output concept distribution. And with this 2D space, and we can divide it into four parts, and based on how the model e model evaluation stage is different from the model development stage. And the first one, let's take a look at the bottom left part, which is the, the traditional setting. Sometimes we call it closed set setting. It means that both the training and evaluation distribution are consistent for both the input and the output. And this is also a typical setting we have seen in a machine learning on computer vision textbook. And uh, we, we also have the second uh, setting, which uh, we call it domain adaptation or domain uh, generalization or domain shift. And the domain shift setting allows new visual domain in the evaluation stage, while typically it remains the same concept set. And some of the examples uh, would be uh, domain bet or domain net, and those two are popular uh, benchmark for this setting. And we all, we, for the third setting, uh, which is currently a, a very popular setting, um, people call it open set recognition. And typically in this setting, when we, we allow new concepts in the evaluation stage, but the input visual domain remains the same in the training stage and in the evaluation stage. Now, we are going to propose a new setting we call it compute vision in the wild. And for this setting, it actually allows the flexibility in both dimension, including the input image distribution and the output um, um, concept set distribution. And you may uh, notice that actually for all or any new compute vision task or data set, uh, the, it, the, they are naturally falling into this space, this compute vision in the wild setting. Let's talk about the second factor. So I guess everyone now is developing foundation model or foundation system. And one of the major promises is that by training large model, and they, they can easily transfer to downstream tasks, right? It means that it only requires very little adaptation cost. And that is also why we are in, in West, this foundation model space. So it, it means, that, but what is the definition of the uh, adaptation cost? I guess there are many different uh, definition of the uh, cost. It, it could be the um, memory or could be the GPU inference time and in our, in, the, in, in our project, or, or in, 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 we're trying to provide a concrete uh, definition. It doesn't mean that our definition is perfect, but it's something that uh, we can get started. Um, we're trying to uh, decompose the adaptation, adaptation cost into uh, two dimensions. One is the sample efficiency dimension, and the other one is a parameter efficiency dimension as illustrated in this figure. And this is interesting because that most of the uh, existing efficient model adaptation methods, they could be one dot on this uh, 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 2D space. And for example, and on the bottom left part, we have a dot, which is frozen model, where you just uh, engineer your prompt, right? And this is the one that was a uh, popular setting right now when people are doing the model adaptation or when people use the foundation model. This is actually the most uh, inexpensive setting when we use the pre-trained model. And uh, on the other hand, um, so we given a, a pre-trained model, we could also use all of the tr available training data in a scenario and trying to update all of the model ways, right? So this is the most expensive setting when we use the pre-trained model. But unfortunately, this is also a traditional setting that people use the pre-trained computer vision model. 
for example, when we have the pre-trained model on ImageNet 1K, and when we uh, transfer it to Toco, right, we, are, we will update all of the backbone weights in the, in the image encoder. But now we are trying to pursue foundation model. I guess we have to rethink what is the best way that we adapt the pre-trained -pre model, right? And my, uh, my suggestion is let's try to consider the adaptation cost when we uh, design the models. Okay, and following the above uh, design philosophy, and uh, one is the transfer, uh, the, the transfer uh, scenario should be uh, broad, and the other one is the adaptation cost should be lower. And with this design philosophy, and the, we implemented two challenges to evaluate the task level transferability of visual models. This includes image classification in the wild challenge and the object detection in the wild challenge. And where elevator benchmark serves the very basis for these two challenges. Let's take a look at data statistics. And we take, we connect 20 image classification data sets and the 35 object, object detection data set. And they are public data set representing either the academic setting or the real world scenarios. So for a new task in the world, as humans, we often add, trying to add a uh, custom uh, uh, specification or, no, or, or notes to clarify the task definition. For example, for a visual recognition task, sometimes we will add the attributes or trying to explain what is the visual concept, right? To mimic this spirit, and we add external, external knowledge to all of the visual concepts in this benchmark. This includes the WordNet knowledge, Victional knowledge, and GPT-3 knowledge. And this provides a richer semantics from the natural language side, uh, explaining the concept in different ways. And we hope that people can try and uh, improve their visual model by making the language side even stronger. Sorry. Okay, we can further try to visualize and, and compare uh, these two challenge with the existing well-established data sets. We all know that ImageNet is a, uh, uh, is a well-known uh, data, uh, data set for image classification and always is a well-known data set for object detection, right? And if it, and we can see that the proposed benchmarks and the, the, the tasks are more diverse than the well-established ImageNet data set or the LWIS data set, right? Um, I'm doing this by project uh, all of the semantics or the uh, in, uh, concept embeddings into this 2D, uh, 2D PCA space. So in, we can see that the, the, the dots are more, more diverse for, for the proposed data benchmark than the well-established ones. I think people are also interested in COCO. If you try to visualize COCO in this space, it will be an even tighter space. We can also take a look at the diversity of this uh, 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 by comparing, comparing the standard deviation of the semantic vectors. And we also say that the proposed benchmarks are more diverse with larger STD values. Okay, to, if you are interested in this, this benchmark and if you want to onboard your, your, your solution to this platform, and here is the pipeline. You may choose a model checkpoint and choose a setting uh, depending on the uh, how, how many examples are available in your setting. And you can also choose to use the, the provided external knowledge or not. And you can try, you can consider to use our released uh, software toolkit and you can run your experiment based on our toolkit uh, and which produce the predi uh, prediction file. And then you can upload the prediction file to the corresponding tracks in the challenge. In this ECCB uh, 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 workshop and challenge, and we have two major challenges and with six tracks in total. And there are four tracks for SE in the wild 
and there are two tracks for OD in the wild. I will provide the definitions of each track when I talk more details for each track. And there are many teams uh, involved in this uh, benchmarking um, uh, um, activity. And so this includes many universities and industry labs. And we are very grateful to the contributions to all of these organizations. So among, many, uh, among the many submissions, and we trying to select one topic for each track. And they will be presenting their pre-recorded videos after my presentation. And the selection of um, pr process is based on several uh, uh, criteria. And the first one is the, the method should be uh, uh, top racked. And the second one is also like the most urgent one that because we decided to uh, uh, have some presentations like three days ago before this uh, workshop and, and, and challenge. And we ask, um, that's why there is a hard constraint and for, for the, in terms of criteria. And the authors should commit to make a video presentation at a very tight schedule. And the, the third criteria is trying to avoid duplication between the workshop presentation and the challenge presentation. And uh, now, now I'm going to introduce uh, the details of each track. And if you uh, if you have have take a look at the the track several days ago, um, I would tell you that the result now is very different from a, a couple of days ago. And uh, that's why that your your method may 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 be number one at this moment, but uh, it, it but it 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 is like very different from the ranking result three days ago. Okay, let's take a look at the industry track in the SE in the world challenge. And the goal of this track is to study the scaling success of different methods. And the only requirement uh, is that um, we don't allow ImageNet 1K data in this track. This is because oftentimes people will report the zero shot ImageNet 1K performance. And that's why we're trying to avoid using ImageNet 1K data in pre-training. And this is the overall table that I get from other server. And there are many, there are several interesting observations. And first, for the first top, top four uh, submissions, and we see a trend that larger models usually gives better performance. And the, the second one is this OF18, they submit the, a, a model called the Chinese clip. And we see the possibility of pre-training on large, large scale foreign image text pairs can also improve image classification tasks in English. And we also have the method called the GIT, and which is, I guess, one of the best image to text generation model. And we are glad to see their submission on this leaderboard uh, because it represents the performance upper bound of the image to, to text uh, generation model uh, for image classification. Although we see a gap between the GIT performance and the clip performance, but it also means that there is a large space to, to improve for uh, generation models uh, in order to achieve great result for image classification tasks. Um, the, the, the last one is that I get a lot of help from the Google Align team and they have been very generous in this challenge and they help develop a toolkit trying to onboard the Google submissions because in, in Google, they have very different uh, like a uh, package from the package we have been developed based on PyTorch. And, but unfortunately, um, at this moment, and due to the delay that the team to get the approval to report the results on all of the data sets, and we cannot see the full results uh, for a line. And there is a one data set, they are still trying hard to get uh, approval. And, and so that's why we can only compare the results based on the available 19 data sets. And the conclusion is that a line is compared, it performs 
similarly with the clip model at the same size. The second trap is the identic trap in the, uh, in the Azinovald uh, challenge. And the goal of this trap is to encourage the innovation in methodology. And that's why we put a limit on the pre-training data set. And I collect the result this, uh, this morning and we see that uh, mask clip uh, achieved number one at, at this leaderboard and the key light method achieved number two, and which means that leveraging external knowledge provided by this benchmark is effective. And uh, we also provide the uh, zero shell learning result for ImpNet in comparison with the zero shell learning result with this Azimuthal Wild benchmark. And we see that oftentimes, if you try to compare different model architecture, and the training objective on the S in the model data set and on the internet data set. And the conclusions you will draw sometimes are, are not the same, uh, which means that uh, when we're trying to develop better models and we should, try, we should avoid to overfit the, the method innovation into ImageNet and because there are a broader range of image classifications over there, and we should consider uh, consider to improve them when we design the architecture and the training objectives. And we also see that many results, ma many submissions, they report the results based on the YFCC data set. And this is a little bit surprising to me, and we see that not all of the models that they actually outperform CLIP when trained on the same uh, pre-trained data set. And the third track is the uh, image net in pre-training track. Uh, we designed this track because in the pre previous two tracks, image net 1K is specifically asked not include. And, but, it, but image net 1K is one of the most widely pre-training data set in computation for a long time. For example, many self-supervised learning methods are only trained on ImageNet or 1K, right? And that's why we create a track to, to, to allow the use of ImageNet 1K in pre-training. The number one uh, method on this track is called Bamboo. Bamboo is actually a data-centric method. Instead of trying to improve uh, different architecture or different training objective or training method, uh, Bamboo use a, a, a very standard cross entropy, and but their, their, their project is mainly focusing on how to effectively connect more data and to expand the data so that they can improve the results. And I think it's, it, it, it's very inspiring to see the data centric method uh, it ranks number one on this leaderboard. Also on this leaderboard, we say that there are many submissions based on image self-supervised learning, and which means that this research topic is still very popular in the research in, in, in the community. And we also see that uh, the flower model from FAIR and they submit their zero-shot learning result into this track. And interestingly, we see that zero-shot learning performance with flower actually outperform the linear problem results and the fine tuning results of many self supervised learning models. The last track in this as in about the challenge is called parameter efficient tracks. So um, we define the parameter efficiency as the number of trainable parameters. Uh, when the model is adapted in a downstream data set. So we also design a new metric, which trying to measure both the prediction uh, accuracy and the uh, parameter efficiency. Which, uh, so this, this, this accuracy uh, efficiency metrics is a single number that measures both. So based on this new metric, and we see that the method called uh, product uh, achieve the best uh, balance for, uh, in, uh, for in terms of, in terms of accuracy and the parameter efficiency, and we also see that some of the well-known parameter efficiency methods 
in NLP, and they are not really outperforming linear problem. It's a very simple method in computer vision, which means that it still requires some study to design primitive efficiency method for computer vision models. So for the old the model challenge, and we see, uh, uh, we, let's take a look at the, the track on zero shot learning. And so on, on this track, uh, the flaws model achieved the number one in terms of the average result over the 35 data set we have. Meanwhile, the dead click method achieves the best if you measure the result using the median of the 35 data set. Know that this new metric is actually proposed, is suggested by, by Matthews. Uh, I agree that this is a robust metric uh, for, this, uh, for this track. And so um, in general, we see that um, there, there is a trend that larger pre-training data set usually leads to better performance. For example, in this, this Florence model, they uploaded the result this morning, and we see that um, this model is trained on the combination of four large-scale OD uh, object detection data set and the golden grounding uh, data set. While for MDATA model, it is trained on like only the golden grounding data, and the result is not is actually not a very bad, right? The last track um, is this full track setting or few track, few shot, few shot uh, uh, track setting for OD in the world. And the method called OM Lab achieved the best uh, performance in terms of both the uh, um, average number and the median number. And um, the, uh, I also want to mention the method called Dino. And maybe some of you know that Dino is uh, now the best performing object detection method for on COCO, right? COCO is a closed set object detection data set. And it is interesting to say that Dino also performs well on our open set object detection data set holding the model. I also want to mention that benchmarking the best vision model and uh, the, the best adaptation method, it cannot be completed with a single organization. And that's why now I'm going to announce that we are still asking for help to collaborate, to evaluate the transferability of the best, best vision models and the checkpoints and the adaptation method on this CV in the benchmark. And the goal is that we want to have some comprehensive technical report so that the community can refer in the future uh, there is one policy that everyone who contributes solid numbers are encouraged to co-author this paper with us together. And we hope that by the end of this year, we could have the first version on archive. And this effort sharing a similar spirit with uh, the success uh, experience in NLP, for example, the, in the NLP uh, uh, domain, they have the projects such as Big Bench and Big Science, where people working together as, as, in the community. And if you are interested in any update about this effort, we will post it on the, our uh, workshop website in the future. And now I will leave you time to Pen Chuan to, uh, to uh, play the videos about our challenge presentations. Please take over Pen Chuan. Okay, thanks.